All right, how's it going, y'all? So Unify the past few months has just been burning down the list of last remaining features on their routers that make them fully enterprise and able to handle pretty much everything. In the last just few months, we've seen full-blown high availability where the actual state tables are syncing, we've gotten DNS support finally, and now they have added in the ability to do NAT and one-to-one -one NAT. And this is huge. So this came out in 8.3.32, in Unified Network Application about 21 days ago, it was about three weeks ago, and I updated immediately and have had no issues since then. And this adds a really critical feature to any router that is designed to really run a corporate network, and that is the ability to do NAT. There are a few other smaller additions here and just some bug fixes and things like that, but today what we're really gonna be talking about is how to set up one-to-one -one NAT and how to set up NAT and what NAT even is. They also came out with a new Cloud Gateway Max and also a new enterprise level router that has 25 gigabit SFP 28 ports on it and can do IDS IPF at 12 and a half gigabit. So they have been very, very, very busy and it's even got deep SSL packet inspection on that. And I'll leave a link down in the description below to those units. But what we're really focusing on today is how to set up one-to-one -one NAT and why you would want to do this on a unified network. And before we get started, I want to talk about what NAT is. And the easiest analog to it, and basically what it is, is port forwarding, but on a more specific scale. So you're probably used to setting up port forwarding. That's where your router gets traffic incoming on a specific port, and it forwards it to a downstream device. So say you've got a Synology NAS on 192.168.30.50 and you want to be able to access DSM on port 5001 on that. You can tell your router any incoming traffic on port 5001 forward to that IP address on that port. And that is actually a form of NAT, network address translation. But NAT is far more than just that because there are more protocols than just UDP and TCP. There are tons of them and you cannot do outgoing connections. Now, Unify has added in full-blown NAT suite, which will let you accomplish pretty much anything you want to do. And the most common use case for this is going to be for things like mail servers and really servers. So if you don't have multiple public IP addresses, you probably are not going to be using NAT in most cases. I do in this place, so we're actually going to go through, show how to do a classic one-to-one -one NAT setup, and about why we would want to do that. But what NAT allows you to do is NAT allows you to specify a specific device on the network and a specific public IP address and have stuff route through there. And they've actually split it into three different sections. And I'll go ahead and show you on my NAS right here where that is. So if we go into NAT, we can go ahead and create a new entry and we're given three different options, masquerade, source, and destination. So I'll be honest with you, I don't think very many people are gonna be using Masquerade NAT. It's actually used more internally to actually get routing to work. Realistically, what most people are gonna be using is Source NAT and Destination NAT. And so Destination NAT is effectively just port forwarding, but on steroids. That's the easiest way of thinking about it. But where port forwarding is limited, Destination NAT is not because there are more protocols out there than just your standard UDP and TCP which are the only things that port forwarding works with. The most common that people will actually use in the real world, at least in my case, is gonna be things like ICM ping. So there are ping packets and there's a whole lot of them here that you can actually use and a lot of phone systems will use them and things like that. But in most cases, you're either going to do all TCP, UDP, one of those, or just your pings, but if you have a specific use case because you've got one really weird application that needs X, Y, and Z, you can choose that here. So this is where you're able to select traffic that comes into the internet on this port or on this IP address and is then translated to a device on the network. So while this is great, I do wanna give one really critical thing to note whenever you're doing this is, if you don't specify a subset of protocols, you are essentially forwarding everything. It is as if you've assigned that specific device a public IP address. And so you need to make sure that that device is designed to handle all of that traffic and has a firewall in place to only accept that specific traffic. 
in a lot of cases, unless you need something like ping to come in, in which case you can just limit it down to ping, I generally will not use destination NAT unless it's something that needs a ton of different ports. So say there is a specific service out there that needs to be able to accept packets on 50 different ports and it is really an enterprise application, has its own built-in firewall, knows where connections are, and it is kind of an entire inclusive thing that somebody else manages and essentially is expecting to get a public IP address. That's where destination NAT is great. You can literally come in here and say, just give it a name. You can give it all protocols, which will essentially act as if that device was given the public IP address. You now choose the interface. So this is the interface where traffic is coming in on. So you've got to do this essentially a two step process here. So it has to match the interface. And in most cases, you're also going to want to match it a destination. So a destination is going to be what IP address. And right here, you can see these guys blurred on out are my public IP addresses. So if I wanted to, I could use this dot one nine five IP address right here as my destination. So essentially, if I wanted to run this specific service on dot one nine five, I could choose that. And now all incoming traffic on port one nine five will be forwarded to this server. And so that is going to include everything, not just TCP, UDP packets, but also your pings and everything. You can also then limit it down if you need to with this destination port. However, that only works if you've only downsampled to TCP, UDP. And they've also done a very good job with this, in my opinion, and they have added in that match opposite. So once we've selected that, and by the way, you can also choose to limit it down to only specific IP address or range, so say there was a network of a client you're working with, and for whatever reason, you want to nap between the two of them. Who knows why you've got it set up like that, but you can do that here, where you can choose just a specific WAN IP address on the internet to allow this in. And now under this translated IP address, this is going to be the local IP address that you want all this traffic sent to. And so now, any traffic, and I'm not just talking about TCP and UDP traffic, but all traffic destined for this dot one nine five IP address will be sent to this local one nine two dot one six eight dot thirty dot fifty IP address. And that is the first half of one to one NAT. So this will essentially allow all traffic sent in there. And so while you could do something very close to this before by port forwarding all ports, now this fully opens everything on up. Though I'll be honest with you, in many cases, I would not recommend using destination NAT, but rather port forwarding, because in 95% of cases, you don't need every single port open, and it's very useful to run your firewall on your router than actually running it on device as well, just because the earlier you can stop that traffic coming on in, the better. And so in a lot of cases, the exact same setup can be achieved using port forwarding based off that IP address, without having to open everything on up, though there's always cases for this. So now let's talk about the one that is by far the most critical that you really just could not have done previously. And that is going to be our source NAT. So source NAT is the exact opposite of destination NAT. And the closest thing we could do previously with this would actually be to have created a specific VLAN that uses the public IP address. So we go into our networks over here. We can see right here, if we wanted to, we could choose a specific IP address to route out of. And so this is essentially how you would have had to do it previously. Say you had a device that needed outgoing traffic to always go on a specific IP address. So what you would have to do in the previous Unify setup, you'd actually have to create it, its own VLAN and use that. But now we can go ahead and use our NAT rules over here and now we can go ahead and use our source NAT. And source NAT, in my opinion, is going to be by far the most useful because most people actually do not want one-to-one -one NAT. A lot of people will use one-to-one -one NAT because it's easy, but in reality, most use cases for one-to-one -one NAT can be solved using two different rules. One, a port forwarding rule for all the ports you need to forward, and if you need to, you can also use that ping destination to add in any specific weird protocols you need. 
and then after that you can source and add it. So the port forwarding will give you the incoming traffic so that traffic coming into the IP address will be forwarded to your device. But now let's say you're running a mail server. Mail servers have to have their outgoing traffic sent on a specific IP address. That's because whenever you're writing SFP rules for a mail server, you are saying this IP address is allowed to send email on my behalf. So that requires your mail server to have all outgoing traffic go on a specific IP address. And now with SourceNAT, we can do exactly that. And the easiest way I'm going to show it is I am going to do SourceNAT on my laptop right here. And we are going to see that my laptop changes IP addresses based off these SourceNAT rules. So right here, my laptop is currently going to be on the .193 IP address. That's where I'm routing all my main network traffic through. But let's say I wanted to put it on that .195 IP address. Let's go ahead and do that. And this will work with your mail server and everything on else. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a source rule and I'm going to go ahead and just choose all protocols. We could also go really specific. And so if you wanted pings to just come from one IP address, you could do that as well. But what I'm going to select is I'm going to say that any traffic from my laptop, which is going to be my source right here, I want to go through that 195. So I'm going to choose that 195, choose my source, and my source is going to be the IP address on the local network of my laptop. And they also have a very nice match opposite option right there, which is really useful if you need to flip it around. And now I'm just going to go ahead and hit add. So now we can see this rule right here that says any traffic coming from 10.30.0.213, which is my laptop's local IP address, we're going to send out on .195. So now if I go in and open up a new private browser and go to what is my IP address, we're going to see it's that 195. And so this is the basics on how NAT works. It is going to allow you to specify traffic coming on on specific interfaces and specific IP addresses to be routed in almost whatever way you want. And this is really powerful because it's essentially going to allow you to do anything you need to do when it comes to routing. Because now you can have any device on your network appear as any WAN IP address. You can set up one-to-one -one NAT rules by just forwarding everything, everything on both destination and the source. Though, as I spoke earlier, you probably don't need to do that and you can accomplish it with source NAT and port forwarding, just as I said earlier. I'm also going to leave this really useful article that walks through our three different types of NAT, destination, source, and masquerade on the actual system that Unify has written. And it talks through how to actually set up one-to-one -one NAT and all of those things if you do need more help than that. But overall, there's a ton of stuff here to use and manage. I didn't go nearly in depth with all the stuff you can do. You can even tick off your global NAT settings, though I would not recommend doing that unless you have really specific routing rules you're going to write and handle everything for you. But rather, just setting up source and destination NATs for any weird cases you may have, you can absolutely do that now. This is one of the few features left that Unify had on their routers of just not being able to do just yet that enterprise needs to do. And I'm really glad to see that they've knocked it out. All right, well, that's going to be it for this tutorial. If you want to hire me, there's a link for that down in the description below. And have a good one. Bye.